Welcome to Shop Night, where I make a gift for a deserving person in our community. Hi, I'm Mike with BootsBibleHuman.com. Tonight, we're going to make patterns from measurements and tracings. If you want to see what measurements and tracings are like, please, up here, this video will show you how to take the measurements and tracings we're going to use. Uh, the next thing I want to do is ask you to support me by doing all this. If unless you want to send a blank check, this is the way you support me, folks. I really appreciate it. Tonight, I'm going to pattern a pair of Cavalier boots for Mistress Brigetta. So Brigetta, for all you do, this shop night's for you. Now, Brigetta has asked for a pair of Cavalier boots. So the pattern is going to be built in four steps. Step number one is we're going to build a midsole. That's what you walk on and that's what the sole material uh, attaches to as well as all the leather on the upper. The second piece will be the heel piece. The information from those two will be fed into making the third piece, which is the vamp, which goes over the toes. And lastly, the fourth, which is the upper or the tall part of the boot that goes up the leg. Each one of these uses information from the previous video or the previous step. So this will be longer in this first video, this opening, and then it'll get shorter with the subsequent video. What am I doing here? What I'm doing is teaching you a technique that I learned uh, under a tree with Sir Richard of Wolfswood, uh, also known as Richard Jones. He owns Not Wolf Armory. You should go and check out all the amazing helms he makes. He taught me this technique uh, probably 20 some years ago, uh, maybe 25, 26, something like that. It's been a long time. Um, it's the primary technique I use. Now, measurements and tracings, and then we use uh, some tools. Now, I want to be clear. I can make patterns from a last. I will use the measurements and tracings to make a last so that the last will uh, be what we form our leather and our pattern over to try to do that. Or I could have done a sock pattern where you tape up a sock while wearing it, make some marks and do some stuff, and I can make a pattern out of that. Um, often I will, for some shoes, use all three. Um, but this is going to be the most um, easiest method for you to learn because it's going to use a tool we use uh, in the construction of the boot to actually build the pattern upon. Um, now, one of the things that's important is, is in my professional life, I can take measurements and tracings from a customer and then hold on to it between three and five years because that's usually what my backlog is. And then I can produce a well-fitting boot from those tracings and measurements. And that's what I'm going to show you. And the secret to that is using these. These are my four hole punches. When you are sewing leather, it, you very often will punch uh, your holes first, especially when we're talking four to six ounce uh, leather. That's pretty thick and we're gonna pre-punch all our holes. We're going to use and leverage these hole counts or these four hole punches as like a compass system to build our pattern. So we're gonna be making dots, erasing dots, moving dots, erasing dots, making dots that are going to cover the four hole punch. That way when we go to punch, it's super quick. And our hole count for each piece that gets attached to another piece is the same, even though they might be different shapes. And that way we know that everything goes together. And if you follow along with how I interpret the measurements, you will be able to produce from this technique a pattern that will work for anyone. Follow along, try to watch it in order. I'm gonna build a playlist for you. It's all about content, folks, and not about the entertainment. Here are my four hole punches, or they're also called chisels in industry. And you use a mallet, like a nylon mallet, to strike this and to put holes in the leather so that you can stitch without making holes as you go. Again, we're using holes in our hole count to line up all these weird pieces of leather together to make a pair of boots. So the important thing to know is that I like, and you don't have to use, you can use whatever you want for your pattern, I like the five millimeter punch. And you can see that each of these little holes I've made line up with a tine of the punch. Now, the distance of five millimeters is from the center of the tine to the center of the tine. This is another five millimeter punch, and you'll notice that the tines are wider, but they still fall. Why would I use this one and this one together? And that answer is, this is great for one layer of leather that is four to six ounce, and this is great for two layers of four to six ounce leathers that have been glued together to like on our heel piece or our reinforced heel piece. So when punching around the heel, I would be using 
uh, this piece for the double layer. Now, why is there a difference? Why wouldn't I use one punch for all of it? And I think the important thing to notice is with the wider tines, the space between the tines is smaller than the space between the tines here. So if I were to use this on one layer of leather, it's almost like perforating it um, if I'm using this uh, oil tanned or chrome tanned leather, um, it could under, under stress tear and be, basically become like a dog food bag if you're not careful um, and it would tear. The smaller tines here are going to allow for the uh, leather to be uh, have more material between the holes. I think it's also important to note that the angle of these, because they're angled kind of funny, is that you might not notice that there's a big difference between them, but there really is a big difference between the spacing between these tines. So that's why I would use that. So let's move forward using this one. Now, the distance is 20 millimeters. So what I do when I'm laying out my pattern is I'm gonna make a hole and I'm gonna number it. Sometimes I'll number it like that's number one. And then I'm going to lay it out so where the next time would fall. Well, as they're five millimeters apart, that's five, 10, that's 15. And by adding an extra spot here, that's 20. So 20 millimeters. So if I wanted, I didn't even need to use a punch. I could use a divider and I could just measure out my hole to 20. Whereas right now it's set up to 15, now it's up to 20. So we go 20 and here's 20 right here. Um, and I can check that on a ruler if you'd like, but that's 20 centimeter, millimeters. So 20 millimeters, boom, dead on 20 millimeters from here to here. So groups of 10, so I'm on the two tens, right? So I could use this and just spin this around my project as I'm making my pattern. I don't wanna do that because I like to move holes in and out to accommodate the different kinds of balancing I'm going to need doing my pattern. So I love using the tool that will actually be punching the leather. Um, and what I'll do is I'm going to line out my holes in funny ways. So you can see here that I've lined up my holes so that the tines go directly in the holes. Well, that's bad because what I really want to do is go fast. I'd rather center it up on a hole, punch, set it up on a hole, punch, set it up on a hole, punch. And this will make it confusing for me to have a clean hole count. So I'm going to draw my number one hole. And when I do my number two hole, I'm gonna imagine where the fifth tine is, and that would be at 20 millimeters. And so if I use my divider, we can see I'm there. And that would be number two. And then I would make number three, and then I would make number four. And then sometimes if like this is the edge of the leather, I have to add a hole. And so I put one right here, and I'm gonna call that hole plus one. So that hole would be a plus one. So this is one, two, three, four, plus one using my system. It's also important to notice that when I'm going around the toes in the toe box, I'm gonna to do three spaces that have a plus one millimeter. So what I'm gonna do is, is instead of imagining here at 20, I'm gonna go 21. And I'm gonna do that for three spaces around the toe box. And as leather is pliable, I can shrink it in or push it and I'll be able to cover this extra. And what this will cause for to happen is a billowing of extra material over the toes to make the boot more comfortable. So I do this in three hole counts, right and left from the apex or the tip of the toe box uh, for the booter shoe. And you'll see how I do that when I add one millimeter, making this 21 millimeter spread and not a 20 millimeter spread. This is tracings I took from a customer standing on their orthotic. And you can see that the orthotic line goes around here. So in order to get this line, when I traced my customer, I um, did two tracings in the same spot. So I knew where the toes were. Now this would be a very easy pattern to, or uh, tracing to make a pattern. However, this customer's feet is different. And so I'll be using this one. You notice it's got the toes jutting out here past the insert line. And again, the toes jutting out past the insert line. So um, this customer has special orthotics that they wear and they were measured on top of them. And um, I'm going to use this one because it's a little bit wider and it's got this weird uh, affectation in the toe here that I'm going to work with so that you can see how I do this whole thing. So first I'm gonna transfer my measurements from my chart 
that um, I showed you in the how to take tracings video. And I will show you one more time the chart. And I'm just going to transfer those numbers into the uh, pattern proper. So here we have eight and three eighths. So when I look at the um, the other foot, I see that that measurement came in at eight and one eighths. So in my patterning, the one on the left always represents the foot I'm on and the number on the right represents the number from the other foot. This is A. This is my B. And we have seven on this foot and seven and one eighth on the other foot. And we come to C. Now let's notice the uh, line up here, which is the insert. I don't make boots for inserts. Um, I make boots for people who are on inserts or wear them. But in this particular case, when you see her where her toes are at, which is over here and over here, she's kind of got a, a squarish foot. Um, I'm not going to make the boot all the way fit the insert because well, we're going to help, I'm going to help her trim the insert because that would make a really odd shaped boot because there'd be all this vacuum and space here. But at the same time, I do need to make a shape that works. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm now going to erase some miscellaneous lines that I don't need. And I hope you all can keep yourself entertained with this uh, particular part of the process. That eraser sucks. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna reinforce the lines that I have that I like, and I'm going to connect different lines. So you can see here, I'm gonna connect these lines and draw them th thicker. And I have the wrong pencil. So I, I can tell you that I just love like the seven and nine millimeter, um, 0.9, sorry, 0 0.7, 0 0.9 millimeter leads and mechanical pencils, but I just broke mine recently and so now I'm using store-bought stuff. She also wants this boot to be a squared toed boot. Um, uh, like is popular in the period that she's going for, which is the late 15, early 1600s. So that would be really early 17th century, so late 16th century. This line I'm adding now is going to be where I, I cut my material. So what I want you to notice is around the heel, I'm adding to right about the A measurement, I'm adding what appears to be a little over three eighths of an inch. So we're going to put the measuring tape on it so you can see that I have added, I'm gonna start at the one and you can see that I have added three eighths of an inch. And then around the, the foot area, the toe area, I'm gonna be adding, and I'm gonna start rotating this project a lot, folks, so don't get dizzy, but I'm gonna work it so that it, uh, it works for me. I'm gonna get rid of a bunch of these messy lines that I don't need. I'm gonna make sure I wrap the big toe with some room. I'll wrap the small toe so there's room because I need to leave margin. So the stitches are gonna go on the line next to her foot so you can see that. But I need extra material for the sole and for the extra material around the welt. So that's why I've added a 3 eighths down at the heel and just a little bit less than a quarter up here. Now, it, this line here doesn't really matter all that much in this particular project because it's gonna go through the sander and because the stitches are going to be here, I'm gonna be removing a bunch of this material. 
Now the 3 8 around, you notice that when I start marking using my compass technique, I'm going to end up doing some spacing stuff where around the heel, it's not going to be snug, but around the the uh, arch of the foot and the toes of the foot, it's going to be fairly snug at the, the holes I mark or the areas that I mark will be next to the line. So the next step before I close off this toe is I'm going to center a dot here and I'm going to go between her big toe, which is right here, and her second toe and draw a line where her second toe is centered, or her uh, index toe. I'm sure it has a special name. And I'm going to basically make a straight line between those two. And that is the center of the shoe because feet are not symmetrical like that. They're um, asymmetrical. So when I look at this, that's a really big squared off, ugly looking boot. And I don't dig it too much. And I'm sure she's not going to either. So I'm going to bring some of these lines in around her toes until I find something that's going to be somewhat attractive. And it's a lot of trial and error and erasing and drawing until I get something I like. Um, and honestly, I just, I don't, I don't know any other way to do it. This is the way I've, I've always done it. Uh, we had such a short class, we never even finished this part of the pattern. Um, before this video is over, you will know way more about boot making than I did before I sat down to make my first pair. You would think that I had some experience with sewing or some experience with some other aspects of this or other construction, and the answer is no. I, I think I made a scabbard at one point. Um, at the end of this video, making this pattern, you will know more than I did when I started making stuff. So you don't, not everything has to be perfect. So with this line, I'm looking for perpendicular. I'm looking for a 90 degree here because it's a square toad. Now, if it had been a round toad, I would just rounded it off like this. Um, if it had been a 14th century point, I could have done something like that. Um, if I wanted to do the uh, Saxon point, I probably would have done something like that. So you can see that all those points are easy to do. Um, and the reason why I want that 90 degree off this line is you don't want when you're wearing the, the boot to look down and see that this, the square toe is actually angled in some way. So by doing the dot here at the base of the ink, you have a very uh, wide big toe, then generally you can shoot the gap between the big toe and the index toe. But this is what I have for my, my basic shape. So the first thing I'm going to do is realize that this is my starting hole and in my system I will label that hole number one. That's a hole that will get punched in the material. I am now going to use this as a compass and I'm going to imagine where the fifth hole was. Now again, I could be using this tool. But boot making is an art and not a science uh, with me. Um, I put arbitrary lines and I flow with the go because I've been doing it so long. I like the flexibility of being able to jiggle these holes right and left. So I'm going to use this compass to determine where my holes go. And I'm going to um, fudge it in parts of the boot later on. I rarely fudge on the midsole. If I'm going to start stretching and pulling holes one way or the other, uh, I'm going to use um, a different tool. Now, this is food is for a female. And what I have found is that <clears throat> I like to make a heel piece that's going to have a buckle strap because she's going to have buckles and she's probably going to have papillon, which are the butterfly leather pieces that are around. And um, so it's going to have a strap and a buckle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my heel piece from experience with the size of foot stop at six. Um, this is where it's going to be double reinforced all the way around and then the strap will come over and come down so I'm marking my holes to six and I am leaving this extra room because I am doubling up the leather and of course if you look at the heel on the 
when it hits the paper as you're tracing, you'll notice that it's way in from the back of the heel. But I want the leather to get forced into a cup by shaping by pressure of being worn. So I will leave this much room because this is what experience has told me works for a pair of these big, tall boots. So here we are at my six hole. Now what you'll probably notice is that if I were to kind of draw a straight line, they don't actually line up. This is not important and it should not be considered for this project. You obviously don't want them far apart. And if we look at our circumference of our this distance and this distance, we can see that this distance is shorter and this one's longer, so that's okay. So I'm going to continue marking holes and um, and this time when I go to the holes I'm going to put them right next to the line that uh, I traced on her foot. So I've marked both sets of holes all the way up to 16 which falls in the corner that is very convenient for this project. It doesn't always break out. Sometimes you're gonna to have to transfer holes sort of weirdly. But in this particular case, for some reason, she has come out completely even and it's 17 to the center. So looking at this, um, I now have her midsole pattern and I am very comfortable with it and I have put all her other measurements on the midsole so I don't lose them because I'm going to cut this out uh, off the paper because I'm comfortable with what I'm seeing. Part one's accomplishment. We now have a midsole and from the information that we have here we are going to move on to the heel piece which is next in line. Remember please like subscribe and share this video and follow along for Brigetta's boots as we move on to part two, the heel piece.